Hi, everyone. Welcome again. Uh, we have another great session here for you. Uh, we have Dr. Irene Kulubi, Kulubi actually, uh, now to talk about community building. And I would like to thank you for being here and welcome you, Irene. How are you doing? Thank you so much. Very good. Very good. Thank you. So um, a short introduction. Uh, Irene um, is uh, the founder and managing director of Brandpreneurs and Brandfluencers. She holds a doctorate in industrial engineering and is a management consultant with companies such as BMW, Deloitte, Siemens, and um, others. So Irene, would you like to start now? You have a presentation with you? Yes. You want to put that on to see if it's working and then I'll leave the stage to you. Thank you so much. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Very good. Thank you for the warm introduction. Thank you for the invitation. Hello to everyone out there. Happy to be here with you. My topic is community building using the example of corporate influencer. To begin with, I would like to explain to you what is in fact in a community. A community is a group of people who pursue a common goal, cultivate common interests, feel committed to common values. So as you can see here, um, pretty striking, the term common. And then we have goal, interests, and common values, which is very, very important when you want to form a community. So um, they should have something in common, which are the four mentioned values here. So we have to make a distinction between community building and community engagement. The, on the one hand side, we have community building, which is all about setting up the strategy and frame conditions to inform um, a community. And next we have community engagement, which is all about growing the community and keep members active. Meaning what do I do? What kind of activities do I provide to keep my followership, so to say, engaged? However, today we want to focus on the community building part. And here I have brought you the so-called community building canvas, which is very, very helpful. I love to work with that because it gives you a certain structure on how to build your community. As you can see, the community building canvas is divided into three different sections, which is identity, experience, and structure. And here in turn, we are dividing those sections into 70 themes as you can see here depicted. In the middle, we have all about identity. So to begin with, you have to make very clear what is your purpose? Why are you building this community in fact? What is your identity? What do you stand for? Next, we have here your values, right? Why should be members committed to joining your community? Then what is your branding, right? It could be a slogan a hashtag that um, combine everyone and also the colors and the mission statement and so on. This should be clearly, clearly defined because then people can recognize you and um, know exactly what you stand for and why they should be willing to join you. And of course, another major question is always the success definition. When do you perceive your community as being successful? Is it when you have a certain number of members? What is that number? 100, 500,000? Is it another success factor if you have a steady growth? Let's say like every month you're growing your community by 10%, for example. Is it successful if you can at a certain point monetize your community? You see, there are lots of questions you have to ask yourself when you begin with setting the frame conditions. Next, we have this pink area. As you can see on the left-hand side, it's all about selection. So how can people enter your community? Do you have certain selection criteria that define or can anybody join? Then of course, um, you have the aspect of rituals, meaning like what kind of regular activities, events do you provide for your community? And then also rules. How do members have to behave? What are your... Um, your regulations, do you have um, certain guidelines? And then we also have shared experiences. So what do they have in common? What is their background? 
what is um, the view for the for the future? What are the perspectives? What the Miren, I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, we're just checking your slides. Um, we're seeing the same page. Did you try the the presentation mode to make them run as you speak? Because we're seeing the. I did. Just a second. There you go. Is now we see them moving. Yeah. Can you see the full screen? Now? No, not not full. Are you in presentation mode now? Yes, I was all the time. Let's see now. Can you see the community building canvas? I yes. know what the issue is. I, yeah. Just give me a second. Because then I need to share my whole screen. Otherwise. OK, let's try that then. Yes, because otherwise it won't work. It's sometimes this way. So I'll share again. Just a there second. There we go. Mm -hmm. So now I'll be full screen. So you there can you go. see the past, past slides, you can see, and now you can see it, right? Yes, perfect. perfect. Thank so you. Is, thank you. So this is the community building canvas I'm talking about. Three sections, 17 themes. I just touched on the, on the middle, the identity part. And now I'm about to run you through the pink part. Next, we have the area of content. What kind of content do you want to provide to your community? Do you want to build a newsletter? Do you have an online forum? Do you share um, your content on social media? Do you have social media groups? And then, of course, do you have any defined and specific roles within your community? Is there a moderator? Is there someone who cares uh, for the community members? Is there someone who's responsible for setting up the events? Another one maybe probably for social media. And lastly, the opposite. On the left-hand side, we had the selection process. On the other hand side, we have transition. Meaning like what happens if someone wants to leave your community, right? Can he easily leave or are there certain conditions? Then we turn on to the third section. Um, here it's all about the structure of your community. So how are you organized? Are you um, an official co community or is it just a loose tie? How do you govern your community? Also, how do you finance it? Because as you all know, building up a community is co time consuming and it costs money. So how do you get money? Do you ask them for a fee? Do you run events where you ask for um, entry tickets, so on. And then, of course, you have to choose what kind of channels and platforms do you want to play on, right? And then data management. What do you do with all the data that you have from your community members? How is that governed? Okay, so this is a very, very good framework to start with the community. So, the next part is about corporate influencer, which is closely connected to community building, of course. If you want to have corporate influencers, you need to build them up and have a community started. So are corporate influencers, in fact, the new rock stars in the marketing paradise? Let's have a look at it. I'm providing you a definition here again. So corporate influencers are employees with high reach who share content through their social media contact conferences, etc., to support company goals, e.g. recruiting. So in fact, they are employed, no external influences, as you might know, and they are not um, holding any product in front of the camera. We'll come to, uh, to it in a bit. So I put it in brackets with high reach because most of the time when employees start, start, start building, um, start uh, being corporate influencers, they are not so popular at that moment, right? So they need to build up their followership. But sometimes they're also corporate influencer who have already been previously active on social media. For example, LinkedIn, because we are dealing here with B2B um, industries and they might be asked to turn into a official corporate influencer. So it's all about somehow sharing content. Most of the time people think of, social media. It's not only about social media, but also uh, speaking at conferences, at events, or um, making a podcast. There are many varieties on how to be a corporate influencer sharing your content. And at the end of the day, it's all about supporting company goals, right? For example, in terms of employer branding, which would be recruiting. So 
why is it so important today to make use of corporate influencers and not so much um, of external influencers? First of all, intention through internal employees. It's a different thing because they know the company culture and um, they are familiar with, uh, with all the happenings within the organization. And then, of course, the major three factors, reach, interaction, engagement, right? And then, most importantly, trust. It's all about building trust. People buy from people. They believe and trust. And if you take a look at um, company profiles, for example, on LinkedIn, Verge's uh, a corporate influencer or an employee providing content and sharing content, you will see they most of the time have more reach than a company profile. So there are two reasons for that. Of course, people trust more people and like to follow more people, people's personal profiles. And secondly, of course, um, you won't get so much exposure because all social media platforms want you to pay to get some reach through your company profile and they assume that you're there for selling. And then of course, number four, credibility instead of marketing talk. You know, it's a total difference if I have an employee there sharing his content, which is, for, for example, behind the scenes, to conducting interviews, or um, sharing his experiences, is more successful than doing some marketing talk, marketing advertising, and promoting solely your products or services. And last but not least, of course, we have learning by listening dialogue because I can interact with the customers and my target groups out there, which is very, very relevant nowadays because people want to um, be close to the brand they love and they want also to see like, okay, there are real people behind that. And if I have a question, um, there's someone who will be answering. And if I want to share my opinion, I can give feedback. It will be highly appreciated. Here's an example of uh, corporate influences at Google. As you can see, um, they share a lot, for example, on YouTube. There's one employee who says seven best things about working at Google. Next, you see the Google perks and benefits you don't know about, right? And here again, that's only something that someone internal can know. And next, we have what's like to work at Google. Or well, here, a small video about Google Office Tour, right? So Google is active on pretty much every social media outlet there. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and so on. They also show regular pictures of their trainees at Google, how happy they are behind the scenes, what they're doing, what um, the daily business life look like. And of course, they conduct short interviews with employees on YouTube, for example, and share, of course, which is a major interest of uh, customers behind the scenes pictures and videos. And this is a good way to present themselves as an attractive employer. And it's a difference if someone who actually works there and talks about it, um, rather than taking someone who's being engaged for telling so. So in fact, what are the opportunities for both companies and employees in the use of corporate influencers? I always say it should be a win-win situation for both parties. So let's begin uh, with um, the opportunities for the employees themselves. Of course, you can have a broad awareness, visibility, also attention, right? And then you can position yourself in a niche as an expert or through thought leadership. And of course, you have the opportunity to expand your own personal network that might also potentially help you in your career advancement. On the other hand side, we have the opportunities for companies. <clears throat> of course, they can strengthen their employer branding, right? Um, strengthen their employee loyalty because people who love to share content about the companies, they might potentially, studies have proven it, stay longer in the company. And then it also strengthens the company reputation and the co company culture. And of course, it may be used to recruit and attract new talent. And it also fosters improved customer relations based on the feedback and interaction I aforementioned. And of course, more credibility and trust. If everything they want to promote and share their values and mission and what they stand for and strengthen their brand, it's all more trustworthy being um, conveyed to an employee. 
So here, at the end of the day, what are the success factors for corporate influencers? Because as you can imagine, it's not that easy as it might seem to set it up, to get it going, and that oh, the employees get used to it, also the company, because it's a new thing for them. Legitimation is the first thing. It should be official. Also, um, coins through the top management. And then, of course, they should have some sort of guidelines, how to behave on social media, um, what kind of content um, they are allowed to share and how they can share it. And of course, if any troubleshooting appears, how to behave in this matter. And of course, they should be enabled and trained. I know at the at the beginning, most of the time, companies use uh, people from the marketing area, but that's not a good thing. I always say it should be a diverse set of corporate influences, diverse in terms of functional areas. It can be someone from research and development as well as someone from HR and so on. And also diverse in terms of age groups, not only youngsters should be represented, but also the older generation and diverse in terms of cultural backgrounds, um, gender balance and so on. Next, we also have um, as in success factors should be the whole program should be transparent and a win-win situation for both parties. And here I need to emphasize that most of the time, corporate influencers are not getting paid for being corporate influencers. They have their daily activities going on while they're doing it on top. So it's the company's uh, responsibility and task to find any ways of incentivization and um, how to keep them motivated. And then we have next, um, as a success factor, the workflow process should be as lean as possible, right? So that they can be very independent and share their content whenever they feel so, of course, based um, on the guidelines. And it should be also part of the corporate culture. Like if you're a corporate influencer, no one in the company is interested in it and nobody supports you in forms of, uh, as a community, it might be potentially difficult for you to get it going. And of course, it should be all about motivation. It should be on a voluntary basis. And um, corporate influencers should have the opportunity to be very creative in the way they express themselves. And of course, also very important, role models, mentoring, buddies, maybe there are some, some people in the company who've done it previously. Also support from the marketing area should be there. And last but not least, you should have a strategic plan. In this case, if you're interested, I have a set up with LinkedIn Learning Solutions a course on corporate influencer. Currently, it's only in German available, but I hope in the near future it will also be available in English. And there I provide my corporate influencer canvas with the 10 steps to follow to get a corporate influencer strategy started. So, in fact, how do you begin? You ask yourself, which characteristics of the brand identity do employees need to know in order to be able to act successfully as brand ambassadors? So there's an author, Franz Rudolf Ech from Germany. He wrote that there are five major parameters. It starts with a mission. Ask yourself, why does your company exist and what drives you? Next, the values. What do you stand for? Also, the vision is important. What do you want to achieve with this corporate influencer program? Do you want to attract new um, talent? Do you want to increase sales? Do you want to create brand awareness? And so on. It should be pretty clear. And then we have the positioning. Know exactly what you can do very well, better or different than the competitors. And think of how to stand out there while using your corporate influencer on social media and also offline. And last but not least, the target groups. Who do you want to reach in fact? Because everything you do when sharing content, and content can take so many different forms. It can be a podcast. It can be an article. It can be a blog post. Um, it can be an interview. It can be a white paper and so on. Who do you want to reach and how can you best reach them? And here again, there are several questions you have to ask yourself. 
on which social media platforms is your your target group? What kind of content do they like to consume? Do they rather like videos? Do they uh, rather like podcasts? Do they rather uh, read articles and so on? Thank you, Elaine. Thank you. <laughs> this... Right on time. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. This was it for my part. I hope yeah. I could give you some little hints on how to get started. I'm open for any questions that might be out there. Right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, actually, right on time, but not quite right on time or over time. So um, I would like to thank you again. Uh, it was very ins insightful. And this is a new thing for me as well. Um, so maybe uh, short, shortly, because um, I don't have any questions coming here from the audience. We have we do have some very inspiring People saying it was very inspiring. Thank you and everything. But if you have any questions, please, this is your last chance to, to type them here. Uh, great information we have here. But maybe just as a wrap up really quickly, um, you talked about also um, influ co corporate influencers um, need for diversity. So not just people from the marketing team uh, and also culturally. So can anyone be a corporate influencer or is there anything specific you would like to point out as a wrap up for the session? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a very interesting question. Um, I said yes and no. <laughs> In fact, I already touched it a bit. It should be someone who is very motivated who is also willing, you don't necessarily need to be a perfect storyteller or content marketer to begin because it's all about training and development, right? But to begin with, I would always start with a few numbers to test it out and then um, secretly or gradually um, increase the number of corporate influencers, right? Mm -hmm. But it depends of the, also on the personality. Many people ask me like, uh, do I need to be an extrovert to be a cop? I say, no, you can also be an introvert. You know, if you don't want to do podcasts, then you will be writing articles and so on, right? But in fact, um, most of the time, they should um, love the company they work for. They should be there a couple of years, uh, highly motivated, and also still get their job done, right? Yes. They should do it on top. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, we could continue this talk, but we're really over time now and we can't. But thanks again for, for coming. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And uh, stick around for the next talks. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.